presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are so. Last night's gutsy pitching performance from Alex Wood, along with his career best plate appearance, allowed extra inning heroics from Evan Gaddis to move Atlanta one step closer to the postseason. Today, Julio Tehran takes aim at another series win in the Braves' final regular season meeting against National League MVP candidate Giancarlo Stanton and the Marlins. It's the Braves and the Fighting Fish next in Miami. Welcome you to sunny South Florida, where the Marlins have proven to be anything but a day on the beach. They have played the Braves very tough all year long. The season series finale on the line today as the Braves and Fish meet in game three. As always, Braves baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price. Let's see if Atlanta can win a series and head to Washington on a high note. On a beautiful afternoon for baseball. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe back with you. What a finish last night. Evan Gaddis's replay reviewed homer turned out to be the difference in game two. But let's not uh, overshadow the pitching performance of Alex Wood. He did terrific work. And with Wood and Julio Tehran pitching back to back in the series, the Braves feel like they have a great shot to win it. You like your chances, certainly. And Julio's pitched great against the Marlins all year long. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look, though, at Julio's numbers by comparison to last year. He's going to try to match his win total today from last season. This was his last start against the Florida Marlins, or Miami Marlins, beg your pardon, in Atlanta, and he was outstanding. Remember, his last start, however, was the game in which the Braves were no hit by the Phillies. But against Miami on the year, he's undefeated. He's undefeated in his career. His numbers for the year, though, very similar to last season. He'll be making his 30th start today, going for his 14th win. He's thrown a few more innings this year, but by and large, all the numbers are very similar. He's actually given up fewer hits this year, even though he's pitched 10 more innings. So a good year all along for Julio Tehran. Hopefully he'll get number 14 today. Very consistent has been the Braves' young right-hander. Let's hope it continues in the win column. As Joe said, he's never lost to the Marlins. He's never lost to the Marlins in this ballpark. A trend we certainly hope continues today. Brad Hand will be the man on the mound for the fish and when we come back we'll talk about another man that's resurgent Freddie Freeman seemingly has figured out Miami pitching that's good news hope that continues too Jim Hillworth has more when we come back
and the Marlins, and this one will decide the season winner between these two clubs. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Hildreth at Marlins Park, where, boy, what a finish we had last night as Evan Gaddis hit his bomb to win it for the Braves in the 10th. And another positive sign for the Braves was seeing Freddie Freeman swing the bat well against these guys. That certainly is not something that's happened for him all season long. But Freddie's finding a way to pick it up when it matters. That average in those first 13 games pretty well documented. It's nobody really had a reason or an answer for Freddie's struggles, but... They're not asking questions now because the last five games he's been much better, hitting over 300, had a home run on Friday and a couple of hits last night. Now, one thing that often goes overlooked with Freddie Freeman is that he's pretty solid defensively, and he had to come up with a big play in the ninth inning last night. This ball by Valdez Bean has to get flipped over to David Carpenter. It's really a tough play to make for both players. It was initially called safe, then overturned called inning over big play right there because that allowed Gaddis to come up and his home run was the winner for the Braves so the defense has been great let's hope Freddie can stay steady on both sides of the ball as the Braves get set to finish this one off against the Marlins well Julio Tehran has certainly been good against the fish we hope he keeps that up as well Atlanta will look to leave Miami with a win before they head north to Washington Braves and Marlins are on the way your local Hyundai dealer. We welcome you inside Marlins Park in Miami for the third final and rubber game of this series between the Braves and Fish. The overall season series is on the line today as well. Atlanta and the Marlins have split the first 18 games head to head. Atlanta won in extra innings last night. And here's the starting nine is presented by Toyota and Braves skipper Freddy Gonzalez. Evan Gaddis was the hitting hero last night. His home run in the 10th was the deciding blow. Phil Gosselin gets the start at second. He'll bat second for Atlanta. And Emilio Bonifacio will bat eighth in center field. Julio Tehran unbeaten against the Marlins. Brad Hand can't say the same thing. He's 0-3 lifetime against Atlanta, and he's got the ball for the fish. He's 24 years old, 6'3", 220 out of Chaska, Minnesota. Second round pick back in 08 by the Marlins. His numbers, as Chip said, not so good against the Braves lifetime. Three starts. He is winless and an ERA approaching six. He's been in and out of their rotation all year long. And one of the comments made by his manager, Mike Redmond, before today's start, was talking about his chances. And that leads us to the Ford Keys for pitching success. He's had opportunities. And Mike Redmond almost made it sound like 
He's running out of opportunities to show us what he can do. Four and 16 he is, is his big league record, and it all really hinges on his fastball command. He throws a lot of fastballs, has a fastball, curveball, changeup. But if he's not locating his fastball and pitching behind in the count, he's going to get hit. Well, let's see if Atlanta can do that to Mr. Hand early and often today and get set for that big series tomorrow night in Washington in the most positive fashion you can have. Atlanta, with their victory and the Nationals' loss last night, picked up a game in the standings. They're six behind Washington with six to play head to head. Atlanta also moved into the second wild card spot. They're tied with Milwaukee with identical 74 and 68 records. The red hot San Francisco Giants have the best wild card record. They're four games ahead of the Braves and Brewers. But as Joe has said, it's very simple math for Atlanta. Just win. Braves win. The rest of it will take care of itself. And here's Jason Hayward to start things off. Jason had a multi hit game last night. He's three for nine so far in the series. And oddly has never faced hand before. Popped up. And Chavaria avoids Jerry Lane and makes the play at short for out number one. A little early for Jerry to be doing the dose dough with the Marlin shortstop, huh? <laughs> yeah. The nimble footed Mr. Lane. Happy Sunday, Jerry. One out. Here's Phil Gosselin. Phil at 306. Oh. Phil got the start last night and had a hit and a sacrifice. And he shoots a ball toward right where Stanton patrols. And he's there for the second out. Hand's last start was back on August 24th at Colorado. He's had a relief appearance since then. But August 24th was his last start. The Rockies beat him 6 to 2. Four and a third inning, seven hits, and four runs. And he gave up two home runs in that start, and he's given up two home runs in each of his last three starts. Freeman jumps on the first pitch and hits that toward Yelich in left and near the line. Christian's there to make the play. Well, we know when the Braves hit homers, they usually win. Nothing doing for them, however, in the top of a scoreless first. Home turf. And they'll take a peek at Julio Tehran, a man who is undefeated against the Marlins. Their Toyota starting nine features Giancarlo Stanton. He has had very little luck against Julio Tehran and only two hits so far in this series down in Miami. 
Garrett Jones, exiled to the bench for the last couple of games, is back in the lineup at first base. Saltalavakia, Echeverria, and then hands 7 8 9 against the Braves right hander Joe hopes to climb over the 200 inning mark today. And I think he will do that. Julio Tehran won't turn 24 until January. And he's 6 2, 200 pounds out of Columbia, as you know, has never lost to the Marlins in seven starts. An excellent 231 ERA. His four keys to pitching success today gas gauge. He is going to pass the 200 inning mark what's he got left in the tank the rest of the way we'll find out over the next couple of weeks and he loves the sculpture here I know I don't understand it either but he loves the sculpture here and he well he must because he's three and oh in this ballpark with a two point five three ERA and there's just something that gives him strength from that sculpture when he pitches in this ballpark and I think if you look closely at Julio's baseball glove I don't speak Spanish, but I think that says I love the sculpture. Probably does. Yeah. Yeah. In Spanish. I, I, it, I think it says on the other side, the sculpture is my fan. <laughs> <laughs> so Christian Yelich leads things off for Miami. 293 average, nine homers, 50 knocked in. Yelich riding a 14 game home hitting streak. Really good player. I mean, fun to watch. Hate the success he has against the Braves, but we're not alone. This guy is going to be a star, and pretty soon, I think. Up the middle, diving play, Gosselin from an E. Can't take it. Yelich outran the baseball. Great diving effort by Gosselin up the middle. And Yelich extends his home hitting streak with an infield single. Great play by Phil. Just couldn't get enough on the throw from his knees to get him. Fast runner. And, and I'm like you, Chip. I, the Washington Nationals are a team that we love to hate, you know, because of the rivalry. Sure. But these guys, they've got some good players that are fun to watch. And while there is certainly a rivalry between the Marlins and the Braves as well, uh, I enjoy watching Yelich play. I wa like watching Ozuna and Echeverria play. So it's not, it's not the same mm -hmm. as when they get. Braves get matched up with the Nats. Here's Solano, who's had a big series against Atlanta. Four for nine. He scored four runs. Well, they've got some really nice pieces already in place in Miami. I think it starts with their pitching. They have some terrific young arms. Will they all project to be 15 to 20 game winners? Nobody knows. But I think it's safe to say that. The Marlins are definitely on the right track. And I would think, Joe, from a player's perspective, trending in the right direction here. Yeah, I had a scout come up to me yesterday uh, that has no ties to either ball club. And he said, you know, next year's National League East is going to be very interesting. This Miami ball club is going to really be good. Solano's hitting, that's why he's playing. And he's in at second base again today. Two quick strikes to him with Yelich at first. Now time called by plate umpire Mike Estabrook. And don't forget about Julio's good move to first. Yelich has a good lead. Off the plate, one ball, two strikes. Twenty three quality starts for Tehran who makes his 30th start today Atlanta is 17 and 12 in games Julio has pitched. And oh that was close. Freddie Freeman with a long look in Carlos Tosca is going to hustle over to the dugout telephone. Atlanta might want to take a look at this. A little bit of stalling by Tirad and Freeman, and now Freddy Gonzalez is going to come out. Got him. I think they did get him. Yes, yes. My first shot had it clearly. Right here. Got 
got it. So just before Joe pointed out Tehran's great pickoff move, he displayed it and may have picked Yelich off first. Well, one of the things modern day base stealers like to do, they, they start with an open stance. And Yelich, check, check him out. See how open his stance is? Now, on a quick move, he's got to come back across his left foot on his crossover. And that's going to take a little bit of time to do that. And it slows you down. And one of the hazards on a quick move is getting picked off. And he is out. Now, let's see if there's enough evidence to overturn the safe call. And the verdict is in. He is out. Tehran picks him off. So the Braves again use their challenge effectively. Yelich picked off first after an infield hit. And now Tehran can go back to the windup with one out. And here are the leading pickoff artists in the senior circuit. Left-hander, left-hander, right-hander. And two lefties after that. So one ball, two strikes for Solano. And he's down on a check swing. Tehran really has helped himself with that pickoff. The last two seasons, he has picked off 14 would-be base dealers. That's eight more than anybody else in that stretch. It's as good as I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. It, from a right-hander, it's definitely the, the quickest I can remember because of his quick feet. And remember, Chris Medlin's got a good pickoff move, and Chris has a good move because he's got quick feet. Alex Woods picked off a bunch of guys, too. Left-handed pitcher, obviously. Different mechanics involved, but, boy, that's a big help. Because when you face this man, you like to do it with the bases empty. And Giancarlo Stanton is that hitter. 0-1 to pitch. And quickly, nothing in two. Just missed a corner. Good life on his fastball here early. Remember, we've shown you that graphic throughout the season about the first 30 pitches or so for Julio and how it takes him a little while to get going at times. High fly ball foul. Left side by Stanton. Swing and a miss. That ball was in the left-hand batter's box. Wow. A pickoff and then two swinging strikeouts ends Miami's first inning. They're out off to a good start. Let's see what the Braves can do in the second. Scoreless game in Miami.
nothing, followed by last night's hero, Evan Gaddis. Gaddis with three hits last night, including that 10th inning home run. That was the game winner for the Braves. And some may have wondered if we'd see Evan Gaddis in today's game. It is a day game. Freddie Gonzalez has typically given these days off to Evan Gaddis, but we talked to Freddie today, and he said, you know what? I'm going to just try to ride Gaddis as much as I can at this point in the season. He'd been going about three days on with Gaddis, and then a day off, he said, no, I want that bat in the lineup as much as I can get it. I'm just going to check with him every day, take it game by game. If I can keep him in there, I want that bat in the lineup because when he comes to the plate, you got to be scared. I know I would be. I'd be scared to death he's going to hit one back at me. So we head to the second. No score. It is Upton, Gaddis, and Chris Johnson. Justin's had good numbers against the Marlins staff. And quickly hit 0 2. Mentioned in the pregame show that Hand made his major league debut against the Braves June 7, 2011. He pitched a terrific game that day, went six innings and gave up one earned run. And he just struck out Upton on three pitches, one out. Hand in that game gave up the run on an Alex Gonzalez homer. That was it. One nothing Atlanta was the final score. And far and away the best outing. That hand ever pitched against the Braves. He's 0 3 with an ERA approaching six. It may take a trip through the order for everybody to feel comfortable against him. No one's really had that many at bats. Freddie Freeman, eight, now nine. That's certainly the most. No one else with more than three coming in. Gaddis puts it in play, rolls it to short. Echevarria gets his man, two out. So handoff to a good start. Five straight retired. Here's Chris Johnson. Chris, as you know, wears out left handed pitching. And after a day off yesterday, let's hope his bat is ready to go. So far, the command is outstanding. His splits, Chris Johnson, still tops among players against lefties. And Hand has an uneventful second inning. 12 pitches, 11 strikes, and six outs. Coming up. All your long Braves baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. Julio Tehran, as Joe said, 
you don't get him early, you may not get him at all. That's when he struggles the most are those first, what was it, 31 pitches, 35 pitches that we figured out were, were his Achilles, if you will, but uh, that pickoff helped in the first inning and two strikeouts. So Casey McGee will lead things off for the Marlins after a three week lull in the middle of the season McGee's bat is coming back to life for the Marlins he's hit safely in 12 of his last 14 games 68 runs batted in including the game tying runs last night it's been a nice pickup 68 RBIs in total. The one knock on McGee as as a corner infielder he doesn't possess a whole lot of power he's hit only three home runs. But he's done a fine job of helping protect Giancarlo Stanton in this Marlins lineup. Oh. McGee a former Cub a former Brewer. Played overseas in Japan last year now back in the big leagues. And trying to hit 300 and earn another contract with the Marlins. Fly out of play and into the seats. Your point's a good one about the corner guys. Kind of applies to your outfielders too. You like you like some power generated, some production, RBIs, home runs, from first, third, left, and right. You can live with a lack of production at some of the other more skill positions up the middle and in center field. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny you mention that because if you look at McGee's home run numbers, he's got three of them. The Marlins center fielder, Ozuna, has 19. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get it from those corner spots, you better get it someplace else. And the Marlins have, in the case of Marcel Ozuna, who's the man on deck. Missed inside. Two balls, two strikes. Can't imagine what that experience of playing professional baseball in Japan would be like. Smaller ballparks and baseball crazed fans in all of those different Japanese baseball league cities. That ball's hammered toward left. Upton gives ground and makes the catch on the warning track. I think it's something we all take for granted. Case of Julio Tehran, a kid from Colombia, playing baseball in North America. The amazing cultural differences he's had to overcome. I'm sure that was an eye opener for McGee, being from the states and playing in Japan, not knowing the language and the like. That was a really good play by Justin. That ball was scorched, and he got an excellent jump on it. I thought it would surely get over his head, but not only did it not get over his head, he made a good catch on it. Jumped off his bat and just a good jump. Helped him make the catch. Got some help from the Braves bullpen too, letting him know how close he was to the fence. Lined, short hop to second. Gosselin stayed with it. Ozuna's retired on one pitch, two outs. That looked like a tricky play. I'm not sure if Phil was shielded by Tehran as he tried to make a leaping grab. Well, it was a big swing and it may have been hit off the end of the bat a little bit. So while it looks like a line shot coming off the bat with a big swing, it wasn't. Let's see if we can tell. Yes, right off the end of the bat. And in, and in between hop. Garrett Jones takes a strike.
What does manager call his days off? Well, I call them exile. And I think Mike Redmond said he needed a couple of mental days off. Something like that. No balls and a strike. And a squibber back to the hill. Tehran will make short work of the fish in the second inning. The duel is on. Hand and Tehran, two scoreless innings under their belts. And we go to the third. Local Hyundai Theater. That's what they call the Magic City of Miami. Beautiful day. A perfect Sunday afternoon. Perfect inside Marlins Park with the roof is on. And the climate is very comfortable. Tom Glavin bobblehead night is Wednesday, September 17th. The Braves take on the Nationals. The first 20,000 fans through the gates. We'll get to take home this one of a kind souvenir presented by Coca Cola. Get your tickets today at Braves.com or by phone 800 745 3,000. Tom has not been with us for the last several broadcasts. I'm sure he's having his special cabinet made at home to display his bobblehead doll. I would guess that's probably right. Probably get top billing in front of the Cy Young Awards and World Championship ring and all that stuff. And maybe even the Hall of Fame plaque. Yeah. Yeah. Be propped up in the back of the case behind the bobblehead. As Anderson Simmons leads things off here in the third. Simmons, Bonifacio, and Julio Tehran. Looks like a couple of RBIs in the series. And a shot to the right side. Tricky hop. Jones knocked it down and hand won the race to the bag. Every time we play the Marlins and Garrett Jones at first seems like he gets a bad hop. Yeah, it's an adventure and that's a very good point. Good players don't seem to get bad hops. But he is constantly getting an in-betweener and fighting it. Nice recovery. Fascio against the start in center today. And he takes a strike. And a good call on hand. Excellent command so far for the Marlins starter. He's thrown 17 pitches, 13 strikes. He's got to have that. He's walking guys or pitching behind a lot. It's going to be a short afternoon. And funny too, when a manager says, hey, you're running out of chances, that oftentimes isn't eye opener, isn't it? 
Yeah, and, and he didn't come out and say that, but in so many words, that's, I mean, reading between the lines a little bit, that's kind of what he said, because he was referring to how many starts he's had, and uh, somebody may have suggested to Mike Redman, well, he's been in and out of the rotation. Well, his reply was, yeah, well, he's been given a lot of opportunities basically to stay in the rotation and hasn't. Slow roller out towards Solano. He's got it for the second out. So far, so good, though. Well, we mentioned earlier in the series that one thing the Marlins have been looking for since Fernandez went to the Tommy John surgery list was someone to step in and not be the ace and be a stabilizing force in this rotation. They've tried a lot of different guys and they have had very little success until they made the trade with the Astros for Jared Kosar. And is one of those men. Andrew Haney, a youngster, has been given a couple of starts. He may pitch some down the stretch as they look ahead to next year. Brad Penny has been brought back. He's made some starts for the Marlins. Salty may have taken that strike away from him the way he caught it. And back to the mound. Another ground ball out. Brad Hand is perfect through three innings. He's due up third in the home third. Still scoreless in game three of the series. Are in this game, but as you take a look at Braves manager Freddie Gonzalez, he is the subject of today's synonymous greatness made here. Of course, before he came to Atlanta, Freddie managed with the Marlins. He's the all time winningest manager in Marlins history, and he grew up not too far from here. He said he was about 20 miles south of Miami. He used to always come to Dolphins games with his dad and went to Southridge High School. He was asked if he ever played another sport, and he said, Yeah, football for one day. Gets his senior year, he had a hankering to give it a try. He went out, put the pads on, had to learn how to do that. Didn't know how to put pads on. Got those on. Went out, went through the drills, the practices, and went up to the coaches afterward and said, all right, I'm good. I think I'll just stick with baseball. Good choice, Freddie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had to put on the catcher's gear. That's tough enough. Yeah, that's great. Nobody hits you back when you're behind the plate. I wonder how many other people there are out there that thought you know what I'd like to go hit somebody put the gear on go hit somebody and then all of a sudden you realize they might hit you first I, I, I say that every day I've had enough <laughs> as Jared Saltanamakia gets things started for the Marlins and he swings the first pitch and pops it foul for a strike
Well, what a wonderful feeling and honor it had to be for Freddy Gonzalez to get his first big league manager's job here in Miami, his hometown. Things did not work out for him here with the Marlins, and their loss certainly is the Braves' gain. Up and away to Salt to Lamakia. Two balls and a strike. Good pitch, two and two. Whatever Salty brought to the table offensively. As a switch hitter for the Marlins was going to be above and beyond whatever they wanted him to bring for their young pitchers as a receiver. And he's done a he's done a fine job there. How about the recovery there by Tehran? That nasty breaking ball. Took care of Salt to the Machia. That's three strikeouts for Julio. One away. Great change up. Can't overestimate veteran leadership on a team as young as the Marlins. Salty with a world championship ring with the Red Sox. Reed Johnson, who's been around a long time. Great guy in the clubhouse, great guy on the bench. He's a hit away from a thousand in his big league career. All very important influences in Miami. Reads a tough cookie. Miss him. Matt Chavaria riding a hot streak. He's six for his last 17 at the plate and batting 275 for the year. Gosselin hardly had to move. You talk about that veteran leadership and it's been discussed during the season ship about uh, the vacuum that was left in the Braves clubhouse with the departures of Brian McCann and Tim Hudson and how important they were. Well there's a lot of other guys too over the last couple of years whether it was Eric Kinski or David Ross or Reed Johnson. People like that that may not even be everyday players may not be in the rotation. They're a real strong support system for everybody else because they've been there and done that. And they've been missed. Strike to Brad Hand. And another 0 and 2. And a swing and a miss. How about this pitcher's duel in Miami? Hand is perfect through three. Tehran has faced the minimum through three.
Braves Hayward Gosselin and Freeman Atlanta looking for their first base runner in today's ball game who better to do that than Jason Hayward the subject of today's Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot since July 8 337 average he's also got a great on base percentage three homers 24 RBIs and dating back to last season when Jason went into the leadoff spot and has been at various times since and the Braves are 72 and 48 when he's in the lineup batting first. And I guess until someone else comes along that is going to play every day and is more of a bona fide leadoff man. I would guess that he's going to stay in the leadoff spot. We've seen Jason play virtually every game of his major league career. Can you think of a stretch, Joe, where he has played better than no. this? No, I cannot. I I'm sure there were some a couple of years ago when he had that great offensive year, but a co combination of base running, defense, offense, and what he brings to the table every night, no. This is outstanding. So ball one from Brad Hand. Now here's what I was talking about earlier because he's off to a good start with his command. Falls behind Jason, but when he's behind in the count, a 359 batting average. And again, if, if your command's not good and you're falling behind in the count and then you've got to throw a strike, odds are real good you're going to throw one down the middle. That one rolled to first. Jones got to the bag. And there's out number one. Well, there really hasn't been much of a chance for Hand to establish ahead or behind in the count. He's got 10 outs on 26 pitches. <laughs> he did. Braves are up there offering early and still don't have a hit. Bill Gosselin flied out to Giancarlo Stanton for the game's second out. What was the number you told me about before the game with respect to run support and brave starting pitchers brave starters this year while they're in the game while they're still pitching are getting an average of two point seven runs per game of support at one point this year the Braves had turned in and maybe they still have the most quality starts but were second or third from the bottom in run support right. That's why I, I totally agree with what you said here on Friday night that whatever tale is told about the 2014 Braves the offense has been the biggest story coming off of what they did last year creating runs has been a problem and scoring runs in bunches has not happened very frequently. That man and Scott Fletcher worked tirelessly to try to get it figured out. Hour upon hour in the cages. Way outside, two balls, two strikes. Hopefully, Scott can stick around for all nine tonight. Got run by Hunter Wendelstead after Gosselin was called out on a very high strike. Well, Hunter's as far away from him as he can get, so I think he'll be safe today. So, first deep count for Mr. Hand. 3 2 pitch coming to Gosselin, and it's ripped to the right side and foul. To second and Salado gets Gosselin. Let's hope it's not deja vu all over again for Julio Tehran. I'm just thinking the same thing. To quote the great Yogi Berra, 11 up, 11 down. Freddie Freeman is the hitter. He fly to left on the first pitch. That 
That's through, and that's the first hit of the game. All of a sudden, Freddie Freeman's figured out the fish. He's now seven for his last 18 against Marlins pitching. Big high hook. So hand to the stretch for the first time he'll face Justin Upton who took a called third strike that began the Braves second inning. Strike one. We'll be big Marlins fans after this game and we'll be big Marlins fans the rest of the season they head to Milwaukee next they've got four games coming up with the Brewers and eight games left head to head with Washington. Braves have six left with the Nationals and are six behind in the division. Regular season play ends three weeks from today. And that caught a corner up and couldn't pull the trigger. 0 and 2. Just missed the inner edge. Let's check out our Sherwin Williams painting the corners today, Chip, on our Fox tracks. Just missed. Good eye by Justin. So we'll be doing some painting today, buddy. Okay. One ball, two strikes. That one too high. Let's check it out again. Okay. Sherwin Williams painting the corners. That ball looked a little bit high, so he couldn't paint the corner. He couldn't reach up high enough up into the corner. Ooh. But wait a minute. He must not have used the blue painter's tape to make that call because it leaked out yeah. onto that edge. Correct. Ground ball. That's going to sneak through. So Upton caught a break. And Hand has given up back to back hits. Two on, two out, and here's Evan Gaddis. Change up. And just rolled it through the hole. I'll show you those numbers on Chris Johnson, who's so good against left handed pitching. Well, Evan Gaddis not that far behind. He came in hitting 387 against lefties at the start of play today. He's had a good series. Four for 10. And a game deciding homer last night. There are his splits. One thing our medium has difficulty in transmitting to the fans at home is depth perception baseball mm -hmm. from where we sit. It's still amazing to me that Gaddis hit the ball as hard and as long as he did last night right to the right base of that home run sculpture. Yep. Right in there. Popped up right side Jones gives chase and does not have a play. And unless you're at the game live we've got some of the best audio men and women in the business with us here in Miami. The sound of the ball off Evan Gaddis's bat last night was just like a rifle shot. Originally ruled a triple. Braves challenged it immediately, and review took about 10 seconds to confirm it was a home run. 
was talking to Freddie Gonzalez about it after the game. I said, you know, I never even noticed that look out there, that little triangle, until this home run. And, and Freddie said, why is it even there? So today I've been looking at it, and the reason is because that left field wall doesn't die into the sculpture. It actually kind of wraps around it. The wall kind of wraps around it, so they've got to have a demarcation point between the stupid sculpture and the fence. Otherwise known as the SS. Now, as you look, if you, as you look at that curved wall, as it goes to the right of that triangular cutout, if we tilt up, what's that yellow box for? That's an odd one. I guess to help them define that the ball, well, there's going to be a home run no matter what up there. Right. I don't know. Interesting. 2 2. They had rolled foul. I mean, maybe Stanton's hit a ball there that they had trouble judging at some point in the young history of this stadium. I do not know. Is there a like a little corner back in that where but it wraps around where it might actually drop on the other side of that little yellow patch and hit off the back wall. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a blind spot from our vantage point. The only way we could tell would be from the right field corner out there, but don't know. 2 2. And Gaddis is down on a 94 mile an hour fastball. So hands bid for a no hitter in a perfect game is spoiled with a couple of two out Atlanta singles in the fourth. Top of the Miami order comes up. Still scoreless. AT&T U-verse and Sonobis, the bank of here. Beautiful South Beach and all the Art Deco architecture. Great place to spend a weekend here in South Florida, as is Marlins <laughs> Park. <laughs> She's outgrown her batting helmet, but not her enthusiasm for the Braves. You got it. And that always draws well here in South Florida. So we appreciate the fans who've made the trek from Braves country here to Miami. And those youngsters have seen a good game so far. Scoreless after three and a half innings. And here's the only Marlin with a hit. That's Christian Yelich, who was later picked off in the opening inning. Julio pumps over a strike.
in the air slicing away to Upton in left and he got another good jump. And that gives Julio Tehran 199 innings pitched this year. He stays healthy folks get used to multiple 200 plus inning seasons in a row for this young man's future. And always a smile on his face. Walk up to him in the clubhouse and say hello. It's always a big grin. Donovan Solano check swing strikeout his first time up. All of those hits in this series came in the first game. One ball, one strike. Split the plate. Little squibber. Gannis will pounce on that. And he takes care of Donovan Solano. That's 10 straight, retired by Tehran. And quickly two outs. Joe, when you become commissioner, yes, after Mr. Manfred decides he's tired of the job, could you do all of his broadcast types a favor? Do uh, anything I can to help you. And Jim. mandate that the ground rules be placed in the media guide? Okay. I had that on my list before Mr. Manfred was selected, but I had it. It's going to be posted in a different way. It's going to be on a hologram <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> I'll bet that really turned off a lot of the owners. That might have been the determining factor. Well, and it was what I was going to try to do is see, there you go. Something like that where you could pan down and show a, a schematic of the ballpark. Now it says there a ball striking onto the right of the vertical yellow line on the fence in left center in front of the home run sculpture and comes back onto the field. The ball's in play. Well, yes. yeah, to the right, but not off the back wall, but off the off the curved part of the off wall. Off the line green stuff. Yeah. But in that upper right hand portion of that shot, that's such an odd place to have that yellow line. How about Tehran? He just struck out Stanton for a second time. Julio's retired 11 straight. And as we head to the fifth inning, Chris Johnson will lead things off for the Braves. A terrific game on Sunday in Miami.
Lead off hit for Chris Johnson as the Braves start the fifth inning. Left one up. Belt high. Maybe a sign of things to come. Good start to the inning. That snaps an 0 for 13 for Chris. Now let's see if Simmons can hit the ball to the right side and chase him around to third base. Hamilton tried his last time up and bounced the ball off the chest of Garrett Jones, who recovered and threw him out. Braves have now out hit Miami three to one. All three hits singles. Look out, Emilio. Wow. Shades of Logan Morrison. When the Marlins played at Dolphin Stadium, they were on the first base side. That was their dugout, and Logan Morrison got smoked on a foul ball just like this. Got hit in the head one night. Remember that? Yeah. And played the next day in Philly. That was a horrific injury. Miss Hamilton found one straight back. One ball, two strikes. I'm guessing that hit the padding. It ricocheted so quickly we couldn't tell. But you got to be careful too. That's a fish tank down there. Game postponed on account of tsunami. Yes. Sir. Fish are all taking a nap, it looks like. I don't see any of them. One two pitch. Back and out of play. That's a good point. Do fish sleep? I don't know. There we go. I'll ask Gary. He said yes. But only if they like ballet. No, no, don't go there. So, uh oh, might have Johnson picked off, but a bad throw. Wow, what a break. Chris Johnson broke from first and a very deliberate throw to second base was off target, and Chris Johnson's in easily at second base. Garrett Jones must have a little something going on at the, the mental day that his coach was his manager was talking about. He must have a little something going on with his throwing with his defense that he's got hit. Simmons a call time there. Nice bit of base running by Johnson too. You saw him angled just ever so slightly toward the infield grass to take away the throwing angle for Jones. And he's, he's perfect six for six for the year. So a hit might score him. Downstairs, two balls, two strikes. Get him over, Anderton. Facios next. Looping liner out to short, and that's caught by Echevarria. So Anderson's retired, no advance by Johnson. Here's Bonifacio with one out. Hitter for the Braves. Teron will make his way to the on deck circle. 
Phillies and Nationals underway. They're tied 1-1 in the third inning. Boy, the Phillies have had Washington's number. They've beaten them five straight times. And today the Nationals have to tangle with Cole Hamels. He's facing Gio Gonzalez in the series wrap-up. Nationals have lost seven of their last 11. The Phillies have won 11 of their last 15. So it would appear that Cole has given up a hit today. Cardinals in Milwaukee are scoreless. That's Adam Wainwright pitching for St. Louis. He's seeking his 17th victory for the Cardinals. And a little pop into shallow right. Stanton says he's got it, and he does. And Bonifacio's the second out. So Simmons couldn't get Johnson to third. And Bonifacio's pop out means Tehran's got to provide a two out hit to score the game's first run. Can do it. If Alex Wood can do it. Anybody can do it. Well, he's got five hits, including a double on the year. He's got four RBIs. Two outs. That means Chris Johnson can go on contact. One strike. And speared that. Nice play by the Miami pitcher. Who works around a leadoff fifth inning hit by Chris Johnson. Middle of the fifth, still scoreless. Not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. Scoreless game. We head to the Marlins half of the fifth inning. Tehran's on a great roll. He has retired the last 11 Marlins in order. The only hit of the game came to Christian Yelich, the Miami leadoff man. Tehran will face the four, five, and six hitters here in the fifth inning. Now it's time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag SouthFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. That's brought to you by AT&T. Any requests for the fan photo today, Joe? Hmm. Uh, 
How about something with a glass of iced tea in it? That'd be nice. Does it have to be iced tea? No. Just a little something out on the veranda with your brave shirt on watching the game. There you go. I like it. It's a good idea. So Joe's request for the fan photo is in. You know, Braves country will oblige as Tehran climbs the perch to face Casey McGee. McGee has the hardest hit ball of the day for the Marlins. A line drive that Justin Upton caught in left. Well, Julio does a good job of that. Starting an inning, starting a hitter with something off speed, that slow curve ball, get it over for a strike to get ahead. And that was something we were watching the video from that game the last time he faced the Marlins. How many times he threw that front door breaking ball, threw the ball inside and had it break to the inside corner and cause them to fly open a lot. In the air to center. And can it form for Bonifacio who has it? McGee is retired. He's over two. And that's 12 straight set down by Tehran. Here's Ozuna. Six RBIs in his last 21 at bats. He has 78 for the season. That's the seventh highest total of RBIs in the league. He's tied with three other players. So if, you've got, if you've got number one and number seven, you're, you've got a pretty good middle of your order, don't you? You think. And McGee's only 10 RBIs behind Ozuna with 68. That's about 250 RBIs for their three, four, five guys. 0 2 count. And upstairs, one ball, two strikes. As good a hitter as Yelich is, just think if he hit in the middle of this lineup. To second. Gosselin gave ground and made a smooth play for out number two. on a nice roll. 13 up 13 down and Garrett Jones the hitter. Careful here down and in. Liner to left on a 2 0 count. Justin tries to cut it off. Jones is chugging for two. The throw is going to be off target. And with two outs, Garrett Jones has the second Miami hit. Pitch was down, but I don't think it was in. Target was away, but it was pretty much down the middle, center cut, and down. This was a nice play by Justin, too. 
off target maybe a little bit but to do a 360 spin and fire it that close that was pretty good. He knew he had a slow runner and had a chance. First scoring chance for the Marlins with Saul Telemachia in the box. He struck out his first time. First pitch fastball hitter. And taken low, ball one. Jones at second with a two out double. Tehran ready for his 56th pitch. And it's dumped into left field. Upton comes on, plays it on a hop. Jones around third. Upton loads up. Throw to the plate is going to be late. So Miami with some two out magic draws first blood. Saul Telemachia drives home Jones, his 43rd RBI, and it's 1 0. Another pitch that looked down. No, it wasn't. This was just fought off. A mistake about belt high. And a good, again, a quick release by Justin, but no chance to get Jones on two outs running on the crack of the bat. So again, the onus swings to the Braves' offense now. Need two to win today. The Marlins have scored first. Here's Echeverria. And a strike. to hit and Salt to Lamacchia the turn he'll head to third throw cut off by Simmons three straight Miami hits after two are out this appeared to be a real nice piece of hitting on a pitch down and maybe out away from him wanted to go up he went up just didn't go up high enough Retired 13 in a row, cruising along, and then the 2 0 count to Garrett Jones. He made a pitch that was to his liking that turned into a double, and now a run in and a threat for more. Is one for 22 on the year. Struck out his last time up. Good guy to have up there right now to get put an end to this. Braves will have their top of the order coming up in the sixth. It's a one nothing game. And hand looks outside.
fly ball to left. And Upton's got it, and that'll retire the side. The Marlins strike first. Jones doubles. Salta Lamacchia singled it home. And after five, it's Miami one, Atlanta nothing. Hildreth was finally able to help us track down the answer as to the mysterious yellow lines on the curved wall where the home run sculpture is. Okay. This area between the two yellow, well, we're zooming in too fast for me. Between the two yellow lines, if it hits anywhere on this green wall up on top, it's in play if it goes over here, home run. I mean, uh, in play. If it goes over here to the sculpture, home run. So it's just that little space between the yellow marks that's in play. Anything up here, home run. Telestrators love them. They're awesome. Because they don't work. But we got your point. So Yes, okay. You want to try it again? From here, here. <laughs> Who, who's up? What inning is it? Unbelievable. It worked in the rehearsal, we promise. There. Oh, yeah. See, now we're going to move and then it, and it starts working. Okay. Sixth inning. Jason Hayward, the hitter, he's 0 for 2. See, right here is home plate. Oh, yeah, sure. It works now, doesn't it? You've never been better. <laughs> yep. Uh, ground ball. Solano can't get that. All of a sudden, the Braves are getting better looks at Brad Hand. Leadoff single for Jason. His fourth hit of the series. Let's get that run back and give Tehran some breathing room. Down the middle. And again, Jason's been pulling the ball more, even against the left hander. And gets it by Solano. He was looking for two if the outfielders were half stepping out there. Phil Gosselin's flight out and grounded out. He's 0 for 2. Freddie Freeman waits next. One ball, no strikes. Sixty four pitches for Brad Hand, only twenty one out of the strike zone so far. But he's way behind Phil here, two balls, no strikes. 
was the real interesting note that Joe had graphically. He's behind in the count is the way you want to face this guy. He's very vulnerable. Even two and zero. Oh. Phil still probably looking to go to right field. Instead, he lines it over short. That one's on a line toward the gap. Yelich cut it off, but not before Hayward moves to third and Gosselin stands at second. So back-to-back -back hits in the inning. A double for Gosselin, and the Braves are in business with the big boppers coming up down a run. And this isn't to cover my tracks. This is just the approach that Phil has. He's still thinking middle of the plate away and trying to maybe take advantage of the the opening on the right side. But he gets a ball more inner half and he still drops the barrel of the bat on it and rakes it. Really good approach. Continues to impress and a good swing there. So the tying run 90 feet away for Atlanta. And Freeman the hitter. Takes a strike. The Marlins bullpen begins to stir here in the sixth. Ground ball to the right side gets one in and gets another guy over and in a spot for Justin Upton to drive him in with a fly ball. Little dribbler in front of the mound. No advance by Hayward. Freeman's out at first. That's a big out. But now Justin Upton digs in. Oh, Dyson here two nights ago. Oh, look out. That one whistled into the Braves dugout. Almost got a bat boy. Right down the stairs. Right past Evan Gaddis. Two. It's unbelievable. This guy's turned into Sandy Koufax all of a sudden. Well, he needs to look at what Upton has done to lefties this year. Look at who's on top of that list. Yeah. Left handed hitter. And Howard of the Phillies has the most. And now an 0 2 count for Justin Upton. And he swung at a ball in the dirt and is struck out. Amazing. So Freeman bounces to the mound. Upton swings at two balls in the dirt. And now Atlanta has second and third with two outs. Perfect spot. Bouncing it up there right behind the point of the plate. Two guys you want up there to get those runs in to tie the game up or put them ahead. Hasn't happened. Well, we know Gaddis can ambush a pitch. Let's see what he can do with two outs now. Strike outside corner. All of a sudden, he's found a little groove there with his breaking ball. He struck Evan out. His first time or last time up with a good fastball. 
They may try to go back to it again and that'd be a big mistake is on our Sherwin Williams there and you see it drop right in the bottom of the zone. Salt to Lamacchio want to talk it over. Might be a little sign problem that they want to change. Mike Redmond, the Marlins manager, has done a real nice job for their club this year. They lost 100 games last year. They're not going to do that this season. They're four games under 500. Line drive to left. Yelich is there. He's got it. In a nutshell, that inning summarizes the Braves' offense. Second and third, nobody out. Part of the order can't tie the game. Sixth inning. And fans don't miss the explosive final season of Sons of Anarchy premiering Tuesday, September 9th, only on FX. I was really hoping we would stay on that sculpture when that explosion effect came up. My partner would have been so excited he wouldn't know what to do himself. I would have thought finally our dreams <laughs> have come true. Speaking of anarchy. Well, what a missed opportunity for the Braves in the top of the inning. Second and third. Nobody out. Freeman, Upton, and Gaddis retired by hand. Now Tehran back to work with the top of the Miami order. Julio's over 200 innings now officially. First time in his career he's done that. They'll try to retire, retire Yellow, who's one for two. He's not able to do so. A line drive to center. All of a sudden, it's Julio's location that's deserting him. 
How about Mr. Yelich? Since August the 11th, he's now 40 for 98 at the plate. Remind you of what Chris Coughlin did a couple of years ago when he yeah. won the Rookie of the Year. Here's Solano. Washington's tied the Phillies in the fourth inning. That's 2-2 game at Nationals Park. Pittsburgh leads the Cubs 3-0 in the second. No score. Milwaukee and the Cardinals in the third at Miller Park. Yelich already picked off once today. Has shortened his lead a little bit. And now Tehran wants to talk to Gaddis. Even count. Talked about this a little bit last night with respect to Alex Wood and the, how it has to creep into the minds of the Braves pitchers about their lack of run support. But you you have enough to deal with just trying to take care of your own business. But today's another example of that. Julio down a run and the Braves unable to capitalize on a golden opportunity in the top of this inning. And I think that's an area where those who wish to discount pitcher wins may have a point. You can pitch great baseball, but if your offense doesn't give you anything to play with, you can still lose. Pitch a great game. That's where Julio is today. He's given up only one run. Pitch out, nothing happening. Ball two. But he's not as sharp as he began the game, quite obviously. He sat down 13 in a row at one point. But three straight Miami hits last inning with two outs led to the game's only run. Jared Saltalamacchia, an RBI single. Runner goes. The pitch is cut on and caught by Gaddis. And Yelich is in with a stolen base, his 17th. He's watching the action at home play, too, to see if Solano's swing somehow carried him in the path of Evan Gaddis. Mike Gestenbrook quickly signaled, no, he didn't. Not a great jump. Might have been a hit and run. Know about that. I mean, he did kneel down, kind of get out of the way, but he was out of the box. Let's take another look. Follows through, but see that right foot? Maybe if there had been some contact, he might have called something. Yelich at second, nobody out. 2 2 pitch coming for Donovan Solano. Oh. 
Line drive right center field. That's in for a hit. Yelich around third will score without a throw. It's two to nothing. Solano has absolutely killed the Braves this summer. And that hit hurts. Yelich scores his fourth run of the series. I've got Solano with 16 hits and 41 at bats against the Braves. I'm not surprised. Five in this series. So four hits for the Marlins over the last six hitters faced by Julio Tehran. And now Stanton bats and takes a ball. It's mostly about location too. Activity in the Braves bullpen. Luis Avilan. Tell you what, the Braves have saved some of their best work against the Marlins for Giancarlo Stanton this year. He has not done, knock on wood, a ton of damage against Braves pitching this year, hitting around 210, 215. Out of play, one ball, two strikes. In this series, Giancarlo's two for 12. And he struck out four times. Yeah, 205 to be exact is what he's done to the Braves. Two and, oh. Yeah, two and ten. Or more fairly, what the Braves have done to him. He might be the league's MVP. Popped up foul ground and playable for Freeman. Braves have jammed Stanton a lot. And he's the first out of the inning. There's the first out. Now you're a ground ball away from escaping further damage. And McGee, as you know, a ideal candidate for two. McGee's hit to 27 double plays. Will go back out there for the seventh, but now with a two nothing lead, they can go to their seventh, eighth, and ninth inning guys to try to finish it off. Sherwin Williams painting the corners a little low for Mike Estabrook. Looks like the Pirates are going to blow out the Cubs today. They're up six nothing now in the second. In Chicago. Trying to sweep the Cubs in a three game series or longer for the first time in 14 years. Is that right? Yeah, the last time they had a three game or better sweep against the Cubs was in May of 2000. Pirates team we pay close attention to. They're a half game behind Atlanta and the Brewers. A little flare over short. That's going to drop in for a hit. And Solano will make his way first to third. Six hits for the Marlins out of the last eight. Batters up. Giancarlo Stanton's got to wonder what am I doing wrong? All these hits. And this one just fought off by McGee. And that last replay showed the frustration of Tehran. The 
Braves bullpen busy. As Ozuna bats, he's grounded out to second twice. Avilan's got to get some company. The Braves pin. Barbaro. Hot shot under the glove of Gosselin into right center field. A run is in. McGee on his way to third. The throw to second is off target. And the Marlins are battering Julio Tirado the last couple of innings. And Julio banged his glove on the ground after that one got through. That is a frustrated young man in the center of the diamond. Suffered a loss in a game in which the Braves were no hit last time out. And trailed 1-0 after 5 with a golden chance to get a run or two in the 6. The Braves offense couldn't do it. And the Marlins with another four-hit hitting have chased Atlanta's 13-game winner in game three of the series. 3-0 your score. We're back to Miami in a flash. Tehran and here are Tehran's numbers for the day today the eight hits begin to pile up he'd only given up one through four innings of play and in fact had retired 13 in a row before the Marlins got to him for a run with two out nobody on in the fifth and now Baker will pinch it for Jones and get a Free pass. So this helps Miami in a couple of ways. One, they get a better defender at first base. And they also get another base runner as Avalon forced to issue an intentional walk to load the bases ahead of Jared Saltalamacchia, who switch hits. Tehran was cruising. He retired 13 straight, had two outs, bottom part of the order up in the fifth. And then an avalanche of offense greeted him for the Marlins. And there were a couple of hard hit balls, but they were caught. Nice plays by Justin Upton out in left field. But for the most part, everything had been off the end of the bat. Little tappers in front of the mound. And then all of a sudden, middle of the plate. Middle of the plate with a breaking ball. That was inner inner part of the plate might not have been a strike. He just fought it off middle of the plate. His location eluded him. Beginning in the fifth inning. No margin for error for Tehran today and now he's down three. 
Salta Lamacchia has an RBI hit. And Avalon bounced one in front of the dish. Good block by Gaddis. One ball, no strikes. This is reminiscent of game one when they were 11 for 21 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 10 for 21 with Risp. Well, the Marlins feel they still have a shot in this playoff chase. Their perfect scenario would have been a sweep of the Braves. Atlanta's perfect scenario would be the exact opposite to sweep them. But now, Miami, after finishing with Atlanta, goes to Milwaukee to play the Brewers the next four games while we play the Nationals. One ball, no strikes. of this game is obvious. Braves and Brewers tied for the second National League wild card. The Pirates a half game back and winning huge today in Chicago. Miami five games behind Atlanta. Center and deep enough to bring home another run. McGee tags and he scores standing up. Saltalabakia with a two RBI day. It's a 4 0 Marlins game. Ozuna tagged and moved to third on that fly ball to center. Saltalabakia does not have as many at bats. Not even close right handed versus left. An attempt to make him switch around and bat right handed, but he comes through with a sack fly. And as suspected, Reed Johnson's in the on deck circle. Looks like hand is done if that spot comes up. It's late enough in the ball game that you cannot afford to give up anymore. Luis needs to get an out and leave that guy at third base. If Gosselin fields cleanly and throws accurately, that's exactly what will happen. However, Miami sends eight men to the plate, three runs score, all of them charged to Julio Tehran. Who trails 4 0 after 6.
Giancarlo Stanton has had a quiet day. He's 0 for 3, but he'll make some noise on the AT&T U-vers trivia question. His 473-foot home run July 18th is the second longest in Major League Baseball this season. Which Braves have hit the longest homers since 1987? Hmm. One of them has got to be Gaddis' homer in yeah. Philly. Yeah, we got that one. Can't remember the Colorado. distance of that shot. Galarraga, maybe. He says 460. Was his at uh, Coors or the other ballpark? Andres. I think it was at uh, Dolphin Stadium. Dolphin Stadium, okay. That's Chris Hatcher in again for the fish. Hatcher two thirds of an inning last night. He'll try to take care of the six, seven, eight men here in the brave seventh. Yeah, the home run you're thinking about with Galarraga, that was the upper deck shot above the teal uh -huh. scoreboard, right? Mm -hmm. Teal monster, they called it. Up by an exit. Another late swing and back to the screen. Two balls, two strikes. Jeff Baker stays in the game. He'll play first for Miami. And a bouncing ball to short. And Chavaria's got it. And there's the first out. I'm not sure which home run for Stanton was the longest. I know that we were told tales earlier this year of him hitting balls above that 427 sign during game play. Yep. Between the Clevelander sign and the sculpture up by that Budweiser bar here at Marlins Park. Yeah, he supposedly hit one in that lobby area right there by the bar. It just doesn't seem possible. It really doesn't. Especially considering how high that wall is out there. So folks out there better have their heads and hands up when Giancarlo comes up. 36 homers this season. Left side, McGee's got a friendly hop. Eleven ground ball outs by the Braves in the game today. And finished with three strikeouts, five hits, and six scoreless innings. Big league debut against the Braves lost a one nothing game exacted some revenge today. First couple of years of his career Chris Hatcher was a catcher. And in fact led his league in throwing out base dealers in one season. Like forty five percent. That's a pretty cool major league fraternity though. There are several 
late inning guys who've made that transition. The Braves have one in David Carpenter. Now the 1 1 pitch to Bonifacio is slowly hit toward third. McGee playing in on the grass, read it nicely. And Hatcher got three more ground ball outs to send the game to the seventh inning stretch. All Marlins in game three, they enjoy a 4 0 advantage. Presented by the Georgia Lottery, Toyota, and AT&T, mobilizing your world. That's our view from S.S. Woody here in South Florida. You know, I didn't realize, kind of in keeping that a secret, the other trips down here, Brian Woodrum's nice yacht. Finally got to go out on it. Yeah, he just leaves his house and sails right up the intercoastal waterway right to Marlins Park. Where the story hasn't gone the way the Braves hoped it'd be scripted today. More on that in a moment. Country music fans head out to Turner Field Tuesday the 16th and see Cole Swindell perform after the Braves and Nationals play. It's the final show of our summer concert series and is presented by Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines. VIP field passes are still available for the show for just 20 bucks. Get your tickets today. At Braves.com. Home seventh, it's Anthony Favaro time. He's on for the 57th outing this summer. And he will face the 9 1 and 2 spots for Miami. He's had a few days off, too. He last pitched on the 2nd of September against Philadelphia at home. Two thirds of an inning, two hits, and a run. First man he'll face will be Jordani Valdespin. He bats for Hatcher, who worked the perfect top of the seventh inning, and whose spot comes up first here for Miami. 
One of those homers this season for Valdespin came against the Braves up in Atlanta. Don't need any more of that. The Marlins comfortably ahead for zip. And a strike from Anthony. Cardinals are helping us out there, beating Milwaukee now 4 0 in the fourth. With Wainwright on the mound. We're seeking his 17th victory this season for the Cards. What a turnaround that divisional race has taken over the last two and a half weeks. With Milwaukee just staggering over the last two seven day stretches. The Brewers just cannot win. They've lost 13 out of 16 games. Ryan Braun's been battling a wrist problem. Carlos Gomez has been battling a wrist problem. Those are two huge offensive components for Milwaukee. The Brewers in serious trouble. Swing and a miss by Valdespin, two and two. They picked up Gerardo Parra, <laughs> excuse me, from the Diamondbacks uh, at the trade deadline. And boy, was that a good move. They didn't know they were going to have so many injuries to their outfielders. He's filled in nicely, but not enough. Inside, full count for Valdespin. Brewers are best to have their act together. I'm impressed with these Marlins. They're coming to town next. That one will skip by Perry Hill, the Marlins' first base coach and terrific infield instructor. As that'll be the next man he had to pitch for Miami. Go Dunn or Ramos in the eighth inning, depending on the matchups. And out of play, still a full count for Jordani Valdespin. Game of the world tonight is in Detroit Giants and Tigers. This game looks like the old reverse lock. And the interleague matchup tonight. Pop fly out of play. It's Kyle Lobstein pitching for the Tigers. Tim Hudson is going to pitch for the Giants. Since acquiring David Price, the Tigers have lost five of Nine games started by David Price. They're two and zero oh when Lobstein starts. Just like they had it planned, right? Yeah, right. And the Giants are maybe the hottest offensive team in the game right now. That ball is hit towards center, and Bonifacio's got it for out number one. Posey and Pence are red hot for the Giants. Pence an 18 game hitting streak. Posey has hits in 11 of his last 15 games with seven homers and 21 driven in. What's Posey's average over that stretch? 508. Two more hits for Yelich against the Braves. He's got a steal and a run scored today. One ball, one strike. We've been talking a lot about Yelich and how much we like him. And one of the things that I like about it is his setup. He's got a real wide stance, but he's got long legs. He's a tall guy. And then he 
brings that front foot back into kind of a cock. And as he does, his hands get moved back a little bit too, and that front shoulder turns up, turns in a little bit. with a 15 game home hitting streak. He's hitting near 500 in that stretch. He has 40 hits in less than one calendar month for Miami. Comes his hitting coach Frank Minichino. As sweet as this guy's swing. I wonder if someone said if Frank just leave him alone. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, they've all said that to one another in their organization. And fouled away. The exciting thing for the Marlins is. Yelich won't be 23 until December. Broke in last year in 62 games and hit 288. Struck out a time or two. It's to be expected in your first big league season or big league experience. 66 times in 240 at bats. This year 120 strikeouts and about 500 at bats. Twenty third pick in 2010. We're used to seeing Anthony Barbaro throw mid 90s 93 94 sometimes 95 last several pitches 88 89 90. 88. Change up there. Long at bat for Yelich. Fly ball hammered center. Bonifacio back, still going back. Leaps on the warning track and makes the play. Yelich is in his trot, and he'd be able to do that in most ballparks, but not this one. He's going to have to trot right on back to the dugout. He's probably saying, That's my best bolt. This is an 88 fastball at the letters. And he crushed it. But like most center fielders from out of town in this ballpark, you get to a point like Bonifacio was where you think, I got to be getting close to the wall at some point. But Yelich hit it to the deepest part of the yard for the second out, and Donovan Solano is the batter. 4 0 Miami. Brings running out of outs. They have six of them left. Sharply hit to second, and that will retire Miami. Three up, three down. We head to the eighth inning. A pinch hitter, then Hayward, then Gosselin. We're getting away, but need some offense down for nothing.
Fans in Major League Baseball, they are very supportive, very attentive, and they listened to my partner Joe Simpson a moment ago, I think. We have our AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag SouthFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. See, that's what I'm talking about. Glass ice tea out on the deck, watching the ball game or listening to the ball game on Braves Radio. They got it working. And the key word there was veranda. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had veranda in mind, but this looks like a deck. I can see the railing. So, well done, Doug Hall. Well done. And if I'm not mistaken, that photo was taken today in Wyoming. So fans are watching the game on the really? satellite from Wyoming. Yeah, that's what uh -huh. we're told. Well, I'm going to try to make the picture bigger on my monitor, but I can't. <laughs> try the telestrator. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, got to get busy here. There you go, down four, six outs left. Mike Dunn, the former Brave, is on for the eighth inning. Ramiro Pena is on to pinch hit. With the sharing of infield duties of La Stella and Gosselin, playing time for Romero has been very hard to come by. Pinch hit appearances here and there. Defensive substitution last night. Thought he might get a chance to play today, but so Gosselin got the starting assignment at second. So Pena, then Hayward, then Gosselin. And Dunn missed off the plate. Two and one. How about Dunn's year out of the bullpen? He has 10 relief wins this year. By Dunn has him tied for the team lead with starting pitcher Henderson Alvarez, who's 10 and 6. Two balls, two strikes. And popped over first foul. Coming into the season, Mike Dunn had 10 career victories. Is that right? In the major leagues, covering 236 games. He's got 10 this year alone. Between he and Morris, I'd say they've been racking them up. 17 wins between the two of them. Morris suffered his first loss last night, giving up to Homer. Upstairs, a full count. Done part of the trade that brought Dan Ugla to Atlanta. Done and Omar Infante a couple of short years ago. And he's under club control through the 2016 season here in South Florida. 3 2 pitch. Struck him out with a fastball. Might have been ball four. 96 miles an hour, one away. one of those trying to go upstairs but he did and it worked seven straight retired by the Marlins after Atlanta had second and third with none out in the sixth and a high strike for Jason Start will come in Washington Wednesday night. He'll face off with Steven Strasburg.
Mike Miner and Doug Fister pitch tomorrow night. Urban Santana and Ryan Zimmerman, excuse me, Jordan Zimmerman, will pitch on Tuesday. One two pitch. Hayward cracks one towards Stanton and right. Two out. Good swing. Can't aim it. All he can do is swing and try to hit it hard, and he did. Bears got to figure out something on this offense. So here down the stretch, Chip, we've been we talk about it ad nauseum, but the fact remains. Braves have not scored today. If they get shut out today, it'll be the fourth time in eight games. That does not instill a lot of confidence when you consider the three men the Braves will face next and the critical importance of those games against Washington. They got shut out the first six innings of the first game of this series and were already way behind when they got their three runs. In the seventh and eighth innings of game one. And it sounds funny to say, but boy, in that sixth inning, you get one run there. You've said it a million times. It takes a little of pressure off your offense. Everybody relaxes. All right, here we go. Well, good teams do that. Right. Second and third, nobody out. And they're down a run. Good teams tie it up. But Freeman got jammed, hit a comebacker. Justin Upton swung at two balls in the dirt and was retired on strikes. And then Gaddis with a hard hit ball to left and was caught by Yelich. And that was the last Braves threat of the day. Yeah, Evan almost bailed him out, almost picked him up. Hit a rope, but Yelich ran it down. Two on pitch for Phil Goslin. And he didn't get the 95 mile an hour fastball. In the air again to right. And Stanton's got that. Dunn works a one, two, three, eight. Stanton will lead off the home half of the inning. Giancarlo Stanton is one of them. He has not homered in this game, but he is our 
AT&T Universe trivia question. His 473-foot home run July 18th is the second longest in the big leagues this year. Which Braves have hit the longest homer since 1987? I'm going to say the guys we had. And that, of course, is Gaddis and Galarraga. The G-men. The G-men. Let's see if that's correct. Hobby. So sorry, Hobby. Let's find out where he hit that one. Mentioned earlier the home run Stanton hit here in Miami above the 427 sign in left center field. We've got video of that. What we'd like to show you is James Russell gets ahead quickly. No balls, two strikes. This is ridiculous. Everybody wanted to watch it. I mean, come on. The windows were open too. That might have bounced out of the stadium. Stanton swings and misses. The only thing he hit was Evan Gaddis's headgear with a wild flailing swing. And he's a frustrated man against the Braves. He's over four today with three whiffs. On. I don't know how it keeps him just knocking the catchers out when that happens. So Russell gets his first, and here's McGee. Right there for a strike. It's one and two. Washington three, Phillies two, top seven. Four nothing, St. Louis in Milwaukee, bottom of the fifth inning. Pirates all over the Cubs, eight zip in the fourth. And that one right off the end of the bat and it died in front of the plate. That's an easy play. And McGee's retired, a one for four afternoon for him. That's when you look down and See it and it's not going anywhere. It's going to stay right there. And you just want to look at the umpire and go, Do I have to run? <laughs> a grown man, that, that's what would, you'd come back to the dugout and somebody would say immediately, oh, A grown man hit that ball. <laughs> you just want to kill yeah, him, right? Right. <laughs> Ozuna one for three with an RBI double today. And he shoots one toward right. Hayward broke back now has to gallop in he'll get there in time and Russell sends this game to inning number nine the right guys are up they've got to start a four run rally Freeman Upton and Gaddis.
Presented by Georgia Power and Sherwin Williams. Four nothing Marlins. Braves are down to their final three outs. Let's see what they can do with Mike Dunn out for his second inning of relief. Fans, Tom Glavin, bobblehead night is Wednesday the 17th. The Braves face the Nationals at Turner Field. The first 20,000 fans will get Tommy's bobblehead doll. It's sponsored by Coca-Cola. Go to Braves.com and take your last opportunity to boo the Nationals. <laughs> Live and in living color at the ballpark. Freeman one for three today. He'll take a four game streak into Washington. Freddie with four hits in the series. One of them a home run. Braves will also fall to 17 and 23 in day games. They're not an early rising group. I've often heard you say the third final and rubber game of a three game series. Mm -hmm. Have you ever said the 19th final and rubber game of a 19 game series. No. No. But a lot on the line. And this is your chance. 9 9 the season series between the Braves and Miami. What a play by McGee. Freeman tried to go the other way. That ball was slicing, but McGee able to leap and grab it for the first out. Playing him well off the line. They had a shift on. Only one guy over there, and he makes the play. That's the end of the line for Mike Dunn. He faces four hitters, gets them all out. Four nothing your score. Thing. Braves have two outs left here in the top of the ninth inning. Let's check out the rest of the action in the big leagues today. Games dwindling to a precious few. Regular season play ends in three weeks. Here are your National League scores. Washington leads Cole Hamels and the Phillies in the seventh. Cardinals jumped on Milwaukee early, as did Pittsburgh against 
the Chicago Cubs. And here's what the wild card situation looks like. That's brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And if Pittsburgh wins and both the Braves and Milwaukee lose, they will climb over both teams. So AJ Ramos gets the ball for the fish with Upton and Gaddis coming up for Atlanta. Outstanding year for Ramos, too. 6 0. Oh, add him into that list of wins that they've racked up out of their bullpen. Call him the Vultures, man. Phil Regan. That was his nickname pitching out of the Dodger bullpen so many years ago. It's 23 wins between Dunn, Morris, and Ramos. It's a third of their team total. Amazing. And he's promptly come in and gone three and zero to Justin Upton. Play a full count. Crowd announced today of 20,013. 20013. I'll mention they'll be double that tomorrow night in Washington. Braves and Nationals tee it up at 7 o'clock. Braves live at 6 30. Full count. And Upton takes a walk. First base runner for the Braves since the sixth inning. And that's the first Marlins walk of the day. That'll bring up Evan Gaddis, who earns our SunTrust Shining Moment honors. The shining moment of this series. Launching a 400 foot plus drive off the wall out in left field that was ruled a homer because it hit in that little triangle. Turned out to be the game winner. Popped it up. It'll hang high in the air for Solano. And in shallow right field, he puts that away. And now, Chris Johnson, the final hope. Julio Tehran had never lost to the Marlins. Brad Hand had never beaten the Braves. Both those statements are an out away from coming to an end. In the air to left, Yelich on the run, and the Marlins have shut out the Braves. Miami takes two out of three in the series. The Braves are shut out for the fourth time in their last eight games, and for the 13th time this season. And Atlanta will head to Washington with a 74 and 69 record. 4 nothing the final in South Florida. Back with more after this.